everybody. Guess what? We're back. Finally. Our apologies. Been a little bit. What were you saying? I, I was going to say, you thought they got rid of us. You yeah. Know, everyone was yeah. thinking we were gone. <laughs> we're back. We've been busy. We're obviously, we were down a man for a while. We're back. We got some new content. We got a good episode today. We got a, um, what do you want to call him? Um, influencer was the word he used. Yeah. The man, basically. That's what I'm calling him. Yeah, he came out with his official announcement that he's uh, retiring from hockey. I saw that online. But uh, later on in this episode, we have Brody True, NAHL alumni. We can call him now NA3HL alumni as well. Um, but, you know, the NAHL has been crazy. This year has been crazy. We're getting into the playoffs, which start, gosh, what, next week? We got the play-in round, correct, Vinny? So we're going to be yep. – Staying up to date on our work of getting getting content out to you folks uh, for listening into short shifts. So again, give yourself a pat on the back. Give yourself a little round of applause for waiting for us. It's our fault. Again, we apologize. We're here. We're serious about this. We want to be more serious about this. But on a serious note, Vinny, playoffs right around the corner. We got some teams that are have been hanging around up front at the top of each division. We got some teams that are sneaking in and uh, making it count when it's worth it. That's right, Brandon. We got, uh, what is it, 20 playoff spots to fill of the 32 teams. We've got four left, only four left available with two weekends kind of in the regular season. There's only one week left in the east side of things, one spot left. That will get decided this week. Uh, Central with two spots and Midwest with one. Those two uh, divisions wrap up their regular season. Not this weekend, but the following weekend. It's all kind of intermixes and all that stuff. So all you need to know is, like you said, play in series start next week. And boy, oh boy, do we love some playoff hockey. Mm -hmm. Best time of the year. I mean, one of my favorite times of the year just ended last week or two weeks ago with the Frazier Cup in St. Louis, but the big boys are out to play now. Let's talk about the Central Division. You got the Minot Minotauros holding on to that first place spot, probably going to clinch the Central Division, 85 points behind them. And the only other team that has clinched so far is the Bismarck Bobcats with 85 points. And then from there on down, you got Austin at third, 61 Aberdeen as well, 61 points, and St. Cloud, fifth place, 59, and at the bottom down there is the North Iowa Bowl. So kind of that third and fourth place spot are uh, up for grabs with these teams that are pretty, pretty tight. Well, you, I mean, last year, we in the last weekend of the season where all six teams were within like a point or two of each other, and we saw some craziness last year. It's going to be the same thing this time around. Um, one note on my not, they got four games left. Bismarck has four games left. Guess who they play in those four games? Each other. So there is a path for Bismarck uh, to win the division. However, they got to win all four of the games against Minot. So Minot needs one win. They clinch it. So easier path for them. But Bismarck has won six in a row, so they're hot at the right time. Now, granted, Minot's 9-1 and their last 10. But I digress. Austin and Aberdeen. Uh, two teams that made the playoffs a year ago. Austin, as we know, went to the Robertson Cup final last year. Uh, they are on the edge. You know, they are – those two teams play against each other this week. Uh, so one of those teams could potentially clinch their spot with some help from uh, North Iowa, who's playing St. Cloud uh, this weekend. So it's going to be tight. And we know for a fact that Austin and Aberdeen are playing each other this week. Uh, one of them's probably not clinching this week, meaning next week is going to be – you know, the last game of the season is going to be – Heck, I can't say hell on this. Oh, I said it. Hella right. important. Hella important next weekend for uh, one of the teams that doesn't do get the job done this week against uh, either Austin or Aberdeen. So it's gonna be it's gonna be nuts in the center, like it always is. I always every year. I feel like last year it was Austin and Bismarck that played six games straight to close out the year. Something wild like that. It was it was a it was a cluster, and you know I know Aberdeen went from like the five seed, like the two seed with a single win. It was, it was nuts. It was, it was crazy. Um, we had similar circumstances this year, just less teams. Definitely. We'll move over to the East side. Now, again, earlier this year, the addition of two teams with Rochester and New Hampshire, total of nine teams now in the East division. So six playoff spots that last, what is it? The last two is a play in series, correct? So, so the top two who are, Maryland and Maine clinched. Uh, they are going to get a first round bye, so to speak. Uh, we'll have the three seed versus six, four seed versus the five. And if you haven't been paying attention, it's a best two out of three, all three games of the higher seed uh, in the play in round. This one, uh, like uh, 
similar to the Central, you got two teams, one spot. The Gens had a huge win on Tuesday night mm-hmm. to uh, put themselves in the driver's seat, put them up two points on Philadelphia. We've got Philly with three games left. So they got that game in hand. Uh, if they do win out and then the Generals win out, the next tiebreaker is is wins after it is points. So theoretically, they could both finish with 58 points. Uh, in that scenario, the Generals, I believe, would get in. If my math is right, that'd be 28 wins. Yeah, the Philadelphia get 27. So Generals in the driver's seat. They win their two games this weekend. They are in. Uh, Philly needs to win and get some help. Rochester, Johnstown, uh, they have all but clinched uh, home ice in the play-in series as well. So, again, we'll give you the rundown real quick. Maryland at 1, 2, Maine, 3, Rochester, 4, Johnstown, 5, New Jersey, and then up for grabs in that sixth-place spot that is held by the Northeast Generals with 54 points. Philadelphia right behind them at 7th with 52 so we'll move right on now, Midwest Division, another one that's been back and forth, like just like last year, Vinny, with the yep. final, the fi- what was it, three spots that were up for grabs until the, the end of the end of the season yep. right it was, now. It was, that, wi- it was similar to the Central. It was wild, yep. yep. That fourth place spot right now is definitely up for grabs, and I would say it's going to be between Chippewa and the Minnesota Wilderness. But we'll give you a rundown. Right now at first place is Wisconsin Windigo holding it with 82 points, but Nipping at their heels is the Anchorage Wolverines. I think a Wolverine might be smart, small enough or short enough to actually nip at heels. Don't know. Never seen one in person. <laughs> Anyways, 80 points uh, for those little Wolverines. Uh, Janesville Jets at that third place spot, 71 points. And then again, fighting for that fourth place is Chippewa holding it right now by one point, 62. And behind them is the Minnesota Wilderness with 61. Your thoughts? Well, first off, I'm going to start at the top. Wisconsin only has one game left. Anchorage has four. So Anchorage, if they just do what they're supposed to do, take care of business, they're going to win that division. Um, I mean, they're already going to have home ice regardless, but if they could get that first uh, first seed, that'd be big for them. And it, it triggers some weird Alaska uh, movement where, you know, game one is somewhere, game two. So, yeah, it's a whole, it's a whole thing. We'll get into it later on in the uh, next couple of weeks, but – Anchorage in the driver's seat there. They have points in their last 10 games, uh, 8 0 and 2 in that spam. Going down to the 4 5 thing, man, I, I'm i not trying to be biased here, but we love rats, Coach Rats of uh, Chippewa. We do. But uh, Minnesota got the upper hand right here, being one point back with two games in hand. Chippewa's got to play Wisconsin and Janesville in their last two. Uh, Minnesota playing Springfield this week, and I believe next week as well. So, you know, just looking at the standings, Chippewa the much tougher opponents with less with less wiggle room for error. Minnesota, the weaker opponent, you know, more chances to jump ahead of the steal. Hey, I love them both. Colton St. Clair and I go back. Rats Colton St. Clair is your boy. Yeah, boys as well. Um, it, it, yo, someone, I guarantee you that someone win. green is getting in the playoffs. So we'll have someone a wearing green team. jerseys. Is getting, we'll yeah, exactly. In the playoffs. Yeah. Um, if you, I don't know if you said this, uh, but Chippewa on their last 10 games, 6 3 0 and 1, and Minnesota totally reversed 3 6 0 and 1. Um, so we'll see what Coach St. Clair can do with the wilderness. We'll see what Coach Rats can do over there in Chippewa with the steel as we, as we get down to the nitty gritty. Speaking of nitty gritty, South Division, Lone Star Brahmas absolutely running away with it, 94 points, uh, and I believe they are done for the year, correct? That's 60 games. So they're holding yeah. on to first place. They have a Z next to their name. They've clinched the South Division. Behind them is the Shreveport Mudbugs. First off, before I get out of control, six teams in the South as well. Midwest, four. Central, four. East, South, six teams get into the postseason. All six spots are full, by the way. So, Lone Star, first place, 94 darn points on them. Shreveport at second, 82. Right behind them, El Paso at third with 82. New Mexico Ice Wolves, 72 points. That's fourth place. Fifth, Amarillo, 68 points. And sixth place is the Oklahoma Warriors at 65. Um, You know, if this was any other normal year where just four teams in the South make it, I would be a little surprised by, I don't know, maybe – Oklahoma not getting into it after last year. Uh, if you say that there's that cutoff mark there, Amarillo had a 
outstanding year. I believe they were in second place for a long, long time in the South Division. So if they were to get cut out of this, it'd be a little wild as well. Uh, you got Odessa, Corpus, Colorado down there, um, not making the cut, but still good seasons from those guys. And you have a, obviously a first year squad as well, kind of just figuring this whole thing out of how it all works. But Lone Star Brahmas, Vinny, just kind of came in, put the stamp on the South Division from the from the get go, and they uh, now sit and wait. Yeah, you mentioned that, Z. They are the regular season champions. No one could touch them. If uh, they were to get to the Robertson Cup, they would be the number one overall seed. Uh, you know what? And, it, you know, how many times we talked about them being boring? They were boring again this year. But guess what? They got it done. Like, they just took care of business. No big deal. Um, they did score, actually, the most goals in the South Division. And if you look it up in a league, oh. league-wide, league-wide, they actually had the seventh most goals. So, like, that's... Oh. That's that's like something new for them. So maybe they aren't being as boring, but just because they allow the league minimum right now at 109 goals in 60 games, which no one's going to even come close to because everyone's allowed more and still has games to play. Mm -hmm. I mean, 109 goals in just 60 games is less than a goal and a half a game. That's stupid. Like That's sure. stupid. You're a human. And they, they, like, they are just so good. I don't know if they, like, you're telling me, if they had to tell me to pick a team right now to win the Robertson Cup, like, Who's a better pick than Lone Star? Yeah. And they score, they defend. Um, I, I, their special teams is obviously very good, Always and they just agree. play. They play a certain style that resembles playoff hockey more than like you know regular season hockey. So I mean, if I had to pick a team to win, that's that's my that'd be my team. They are the regular season champions for a reason. All right, going on that list though, three point El Paso. They play this week head to head. Um, the winner of that series essentially is going to get a first round buy and avoid that play in series. Yep. Uh, Shreveport with an advantage right now with a two point lead over El Paso. And then you, uh, you mentioned, you know, whoever say is in third place, their, uh, their gift as of now is the defending champion Oklahoma Warriors. So that's not really an easy, an easy task by any means. And I remember the joke last year we had um, with uh, that South division was that, New Mexico Ice Wolves had the 10th most points in the league and didn't make the playoffs. That's how good the South was last year. Yep. Um, this year, New Mexico being in fifth, well, fourth place, sorry, Amarillo's in fifth. Um, the 15 and 16 teams in terms of total points in the league are those two South teams. So everything's kind of shaping out where, you know, the best teams are going to be in the postseason. And it should create some epic play-in series, especially best two out of three. Like that only enhances game one. And then obviously any game after that's an elimination game. So, you know, the atmosphere in these buildings, the big South buildings, especially where, you know, El Paso can pack the house. Shreveport, we know could put some people in there in New Mexico. I mean, you watch a broadcast on any TV, you just see all the fans. I mean, yeah. it's, it's nuts in that building. So great environments. I'm really looking forward to the South division play in series, obviously because of, you know, the game is meaning a more, but some of these matchups are just really intriguing. Like we're going to have some good teams out of the playoffs very early. Yeah. It's going to be weird, but it's going to be weird. It's going to be fun. Hey, you want to be the best. You got to beat the best. You know, that's what it is. Who said that? Who said that? Yeah. Whose quote is that? Oh, I mean, I mean, I have no idea. I mean, I'm, I'm sure some famous coach or movie reference. I mean, I, it, it's Howard. an old quote, obviously he might've, he no, might, he might've said probably. that. Probably. All right, well, that's our look uh, as we're sitting. We know it's been a while since we filled you in on uh, the standings and where we're at. But, hey, we're, we're here for the postseason. We got you now for the rest of the year. Um, it's going to be exciting. Playoffs officially start, Vinny, when? We got, like you said, play-ins next weekend, correct? Next next, next Friday, next Friday. Possibly next Thursday. We haven't seen the full schedules yet, but next weekend for sure is going to be the East and South play-in series. They're going to be electric. As of now, as it stands right now, Things can change. We got Rochester Northeast, Johnstown in New Jersey in the east and the south. We got El Paso, Oklahoma, New Mexico, Amarillo. See a lot of good series, a lot of good storylines in those uh, four playing series. All right, Vinny, thanks for that. Um, obviously, like we alluded to earlier in this episode, a great interview we have with uh, with an awesome kid, awesome player, um, a great media personality i mean he's done all sorts of stuff uh within the game of hockey and uh yeah we'll just throw right over here's brody true obviously we uh mentioned this before going into this interview we're here with a na3hl nahl player brody true youtuber what other what other titles do you want 
influencer. There we go. Sorry. Okay. Merch maker. Merch maker. Content uh, creator. Even though I hate that term, but it's okay. I honestly, content creator sounds better than influencer. Influencer sounds kind of cringy. Influencer sounds like like you're on Instagram trying to like just get likes. Yeah. For yeah, yeah, yeah. Because content creation is like you're just creating stuff. Yeah. It sounds way better than I'm going to influence you. That's true. That's fair. <laughs> NHL, Chell player. Yep. You'd probably, yeah, you'd beat me. I'm not good at the new ones. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Back in the day in my fraternity life, like I was, I was nasty. I would 10 0 guys all the time. It was great. Um, I've yeah. Ne- I've never been good. So, yes, I would get obliterated. <laughs> that's fair. My roommate Cam, who's back here somewhere, he that's all the kid does. He plays chelsea. So you should just play rips. him sometime. I probably nah, I might beat him. You might to be you honest. Might come across him. Anyways, Brody, well, thank you for doing this with us. I know we're here at the NA3 HL showcase. You guys just got done with your second game. Uh, big win for the boys out there. But just talk about this season and kind of uh, how it's been so far in the 3 HL. And we're obviously going to dive into what you do. Yeah, off the yeah, edge. yeah, yeah. So, this year, honestly, compared to last year, like last year, we were pretty much a powerhouse but this year it's a little bit more of we got a lot of young guys so we're not going to be winning as many games so the message this year is just try to stay calm as far as a leadership group because when times get tough it gets really tough so right. just trying to stay positive and just working towards wins and that's kind of we got the win today that was huge for us so we're just going to keep pushing in that that direction looking at your ep right here 70 games i don't know if that includes today so congratulations yeah, yeah. <laughs> you obviously were counting down you knew yeah um but let's just kind of talk about like how you got into hockey i know looking at like your website and the stuff you do like we said off ice um big thing for you is dream big or yeah did, dream I, big. did i do it right yeah dream, dream big. big um being a smaller guy obviously we have the three shortest kings in the nahl yes, family right. here it's <laughs> awesome um but just kind of talk about how you got into hockey and being an undersized guy like the rest of us and just getting to this level now and getting to play at the top level of the NHL. Yeah, so I have been – I played hockey since I was, like, six years old. So I honest, I started in Danbury, so it's, like, the full circle moment for me. Like, playing back in Danbury in juniors is kind of cool. But right. I started playing Tier 3 all the way up until Pee Wees, and then I switched to Tier 2 uh, for the Ridgefield Lions and then went Tier 1 with the Elite Hockey Academy. And then after that, I made the push to the – Three HL, so and they got a couple long games, so what? that helps. <laughs> what, what's that? What's that like process like being mainly in the three HL, but trying to earn that spot with a big club, especially right in your own building where you yeah. got any guys look at you almost every day. Yeah, it's it's you just got to keep focus and like keep pushing. Like every day it has to be your best day. So like there's a lot of opportunity, especially when there's a null team in that building. So like I got my opportunity, I tried the best I could, didn't it stick, but. I got the opportunity, and that's kind of all that matters. And you played a few games this year in the NA, right? Yeah, I got caught up to two. Okay, right on. Well, and like you said, not only with any building, any team in your own building, but you know, Generals, Titans, you got all those any teams that you're going to, every time you're there, you're in front of NA coaches and scouts yeah. like that too. That's got to be a big help. <laughs> it, it does. It also helps that you're like minutes away from colleges as well. So, right. like the exposure is definitely there. Definitely, especially here too, obviously, like, Today, you had a bunch of people talking to yeah. you, all sorts of stuff like that. But um, let's kind of just talk about playing in the NA3HL, just the travel. Obviously, being on the east side is a little easier. I, I've, to heard being some, the I've heard some stories like in Texas and like, no thanks. Right, right. The east, yeah. the east is good for me. Exactly. Yeah, you guys, <laughs> what's your longest trip? Like seven hours, maybe? No, like five. Oh, my gosh. Like, And then like I'm like complaining, oh, oh God. We got, we got five a five hour, hour today, yeah. and then we got stories like 17 hours on the bus. So right. East is perfect for me. <laughs> Any fun road trips? What's been the best one so far? Honestly, the longer ones are fun. Did you guys fly here? Yeah, we flew. Some guys drove, which is Holy 17 hours. No. no, I mean, back to 17 hours, but like 17 hours. <laughs> <Right. I, laughs> like, I'll, I'll take the trip uh, on the plane. So I would say, yeah, I think Atlanta, like Atlanta's going to play New Mexico. <laughs> That's like literally across the country. You have to like just drive down to like Norwich. Yeah, like right. Norwich is like an hour and a half. Well, you can like do you guys I mean obviously you guys travel with a team, but like, hey coach, like something happened. I'm gonna I can meet you there. I, I've, a game I've done that before. <laughs> I've done that before. <laughs> like it's it's like right there. So it's just like, yeah, coach, I I got a meeting, so I'm gonna be, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna be with you guys like in a couple of minutes. So. Right. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Uh you didn't answer the question. Sorry. The, yeah, maybe you did. Maybe I cut you off. Best bus trip. Best best something. Oh yeah. Oh, to... sorry, sorry. Um, I would honestly say some of the northeast trips have been really fun. 
Um, I mean, it's not the longest trip we've had, but like you got to find a sweet spot where you're not like because it's like you the first 10 minutes are fun. Everyone falls asleep. And then the back half is like where everyone's like waking up. So like you got to find like the medium ground. And when you're in the medium ground, it's the most fun you'll ever have. Right. right. So like Northeast for sure. Any uh movies or podcasts you're big on right now? Obviously, not long enough of a of a road trip to read a whole Harry Potter book like they do in the South. But Harry Potter, wow, that's that's an interesting one. Um, <laughs> that was a book, by the way. I know you're young. That was a book once. Yeah, yeah. Turned into uh, a movie. I mean, honestly, I've been reading books, not even podcasts. Like, wow. like not like Harry Potter and like the whatever that stuff, stuff is, <laughs> but <laughs> but like the the motivational stuff, like the like chip each day at a time, like many, I don't even know all the names, but I read like this Will Smith book that was really, really good. So would recommend that. Make your own bed. Have you read that one? No. Make your bed. That's a good That's one. That's next. Yep. Does it one. come with a podcast? Cause I can't really read. So <laughs> audio book. Neither can he. Yeah. Can't well, I'm terrible at reading. I, but if, if someone's saying it to me and I could follow along. Yeah. But once I'm, when I'm reading a page, I'll read it. Won't even process what I'd have to go back uh, yeah, multiple times. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you read the motivational books. You're trying to you know, be a you know a better person, but you're also wearing a C for your team. Yeah. How do you take that from what you learn and try to apply it to real life? Um, just like trying to like each day has to be a different step. So like one, it's not going to be the same day every single day. So, you like reading these books help you get in situations. Like for instance, like you're having a rough practice. How do you reel everyone back in? So like leadership books and like all those kind of things like really help you push past those brutal moments in like the day to day. Definitely. Cause that's not what everyone sees. Like you see the, the on ice product, you don't see the practice. You don't see the in between, like everyone's screaming at each other. Like you got to find a way to calm everyone down. Yeah, definitely. And like you kind of said, like it's been a tough season for you guys, but those books have to help too. Yeah. You're, the, you're the leader of that team, yeah. like Vinny stated. So what, what are some things you say to your guys? Like, Hey, like we're, Let's turn this around. Look, always look forward. To yeah, the next honestly, game. like it's like tasting what what I've been heard in my in my ear. It's like just no, oh, to say that. And, oh, that sounds good. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good line. Let me use that. I actually did that in one of my videos, but we'll get to that in a little, little right. bit. But like just trying to keep everyone on track is huge, especially with the younger kids, right? Because they just came out of U eighteen, U sixteen, so they're still not used to this junior, like this form of junior hockey. Right. So hundred well, percent. Let's dive into it. We, I mean. There's a there's a reason why he's here because he's making he makes awesome videos. Right, hundred <laughs> percent. Me, I watch him at work. Don't I, don't tell my boss that I'm. <laughs> probably cut that part. Eat company cut that nine, part out. It's for work, Mark. Obviously, it's, work, it's, here. Yeah, it's marketing, marketing. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Learning about the league. Yeah. But uh, obviously, for people who don't know, you can. So where, I make where do they find you. Uh, I'm off. on YouTube, True Crew, and then Instagram. Brody True, my name. Mm-hmm. Probably gonna switch that soon, but TikTok's also True Crew, and I just make hockey videos. You can follow me throughout the season, and I just—it's basically like behind the scenes. Yeah, that's basically what I do. How did you get into it? When did you start it? And COVID. What motivation. COVID. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you guys know Pat Shea, but he was a YouTuber, and I got inspiration from him. And it was like a random day in COVID. I was like, "Mom, I'm gonna make a YouTube channel." She's like. Okay, like good luck <laughs> with that. So the rule, get away from me. So buddy. we come back from COVID, and I got a camera in my hand, and everyone's like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Yeah, guys, like we're day to day." And I was with the Lee Hockey program, so we had like it was, we basically had school in the rink, one of those programs. So, yeah. <laughs> so like the schooling, like it's fun because we're all with each other. So I thought that was a cool atmosphere, especially since no one's filming that kind of stuff. It's always like the pro and like the the stuff that. NHL stuff and that no one's touching on the junior stuff. No one's touching on the U18 at the time. Mm -hmm. So like that was for me, like what I wanted to try to dive into that market. I didn't even know what the market was. I just wanted to try it out. And here we are. I mean, GoPro videos, a lot of situations where people wanted to kill me, but (laughs) that comes with being a YouTuber in a junior league. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I mean, I've I've watched a couple of the the mic'd up videos against the Titans and like literally they come after you right away. It's like, oh, you know, YouTuber, like put this on your channel or something like that. And like, they'll give you a shove, give you a shot to the mm. teeth or something. We've seen you lose a tooth. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that yeah. was that was a fun video to make. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But like when they say that, it's like, do you realize when you're saying that it just means you watch the video? Exactly. <laughs> like you're making me money. <laughs> <laughs> Like I'm just like I haven't. Sure. I know I I I'm waiting for the perfect time, but like 
if we're losing, I don't really like to chirp that right, much. Yeah, so it's yeah. like we have to be winning. So thanks for the sub, buddy. Thanks for the sub. <laughs> You're watching. You're paying me. Yep. <laughs> Got this new car. <laughs> yeah. Uh, doing this, obviously, like we said, you just randomly COVID. I feel like a lot of people picked up that's, random habits during COVID. Random COVID random things that to get through the days. But when did this take off? I want to say summer. 2021 i posted a gopro it's like a college combine kind of gopro video and like it got like a hundred thousand views which at the time was like oh my god you're probably freaking out because now i'm getting like pretty around that number now so it's like that's just normal for me so but a hundred thousand at the time was like that's big that's a huge moment for me but after that you gain like your kind of base audience so you're always posting for those people and like over time that audience builds and builds and builds and then you kind of get what i have right now which is either you hate me or you like me so but the people that that hate me like you're also watching the videos so that's right that's part of it i'm a hater that's fine you're what you're making me money <laughs> <laughs> that's an interesting way to put me on the podcast yeah. if you don't like well, me but <laughs> well, I, what was it we were in new hampshire for an nap event na3 na game i mean everything oh, god and you, I saw your video about your call to the null and then how you had, I think it was like 200,000 views like this, like maybe a couple of days in, you're like, holy crap. Like mm-hmm. that's like, that's a pretty big number. Yeah. Like, how often would you say you get videos like that where you're, you know, probably doubling your normal audience? It's, it's the videos that people are looking forward to, like, especially since they're following my career so closely, like that's a milestone game. So like, obviously they're going to tune in for that. Like the mic'd up videos are so consistent that it's like, I can miss one or two and I'll still kind of know the flow, but like a null call up video is like, like that, that's good for him. Like, I'm going to see how this goes. Like I'm going to follow along because at the end of the day, they are watching. They do care. Like, Mm -hmm. even though they, they want to bash me in the comment section, like they still care. And like, those are the videos that I already knew that video was going to do well. I knew the fight video was going to do well because like, Oh my God, Brody got in a fight. <laughs> He's five foot five. <laughs> How did that one go? Yeah, yeah kind of the way we all thought when you <laughs> picked the biggest dude in the team. Hey, I got, I don't even know why I did that. That was, <laughs> and then the visor came off. <laughs> yeah. David versus Goliath. Hey, look, you're standing up for short kings everywhere. You sometimes you got to go after a big, a big guy. You just got to show, you got to show him you're not afraid. Exactly. Yeah. You might not win, yeah. but you got to show him you're not going to back. So, like, obviously, you can't film yourself when you're on the ice. And you can't, I mean, you can't do everything. So like, who's a part of the true crew, yep. so to speak? And like, how how does it all get made? So one of my buddies, shout out Jack Rattachi. He was one of my uh, best friends growing up in high school. And I basically, it was just, it's like a random summer. Cause I used to just do GoPro videos and like have some random guy film me sometimes like a lower team. Cause elite hockey, you had 18 U and 16 U. So I'll just like ask, Hey, Bobby, can you film me? Now I have Jack, who I pretty much taught everything there is to know about camera work because I also have a freelance company, which I do media stuff. So I have the background on what's going on. So like I told tell him what to film. He films it for me and I edit pretty much everything myself. Okay, that's cool. And for the future, like I'm going to hopefully get like two, two to three, maybe filmers a game. Like we'll see. Like I'm always looking for the next step. Like this is good. But well, what can I do to improve it? 100. percent You always got to evolve. Yeah, yeah. Evolve or die. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You can't copy and paste your way to extinction. No, yep. you can't. Yeah. If we die, we die. In the and this is pretty original because no one's doing this right now. Right. And... When did you uh, get into the merch game? Last year, or two years ago. I I've always kind of because people ask like, do you have merch? Do you have merch? And I'm like, no, I don't. Like, I don't. <laughs> I don't have merch. <laughs> but like, I use like a ship like drop shipping company, and they just make everything for me. Oh, they cool. ship it and I just take the cut and it's like, oh, perfect. Yeah. So I just made the website myself on like Squarespace and then they basically run the behind the scenes kind of. Very so cool. like you order a package from True Crew, it's not really coming to me. Oh no. That's that's a don't break everybody's down. heart. Yeah, <laughs> down there. This just in Brody True is actually gonna sign everything that he's shipped yes. out to you. It's gonna yeah. go into your house and you're gonna pay for it. <laughs> but like that, back. but like that helps because my schedule is nuts. So like having that not have to worry about that obviously people email me like a couple of things like didn't come in the right way i have to deal with it so i right. still deal with that kind of stuff but like for the most part it's off my plate yeah and that's kind of growing a business that's kind of what you need i think i've seen a commercial for a ship station actually yeah 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 I have, during a football game anyways whatever you no know, I, well, I was my next question was basically gonna be like my work-life balance is awful 
<laughs> I'm assuming yours is as well. Uh, how do you balance it all playing junior hockey, having a business, but also like another business? How, how do you manage it all? Uh, I'm not <laughs> even organized either. So <laughs> just like whatever, like I just try to grind it out. And like some days it's like, I don't want to do this. And I honestly don't do it. I also just got another editor. So he does the gaming videos, which helps a ton because I can't do that right, right. with my schedule. So that also allows me to post more consistent videos, like a gaming video, mic up video, gaming video. So it's like I'm posting four times a week instead of just two. Right. Okay. So that's that's pretty good. How do you handle the haters? Because I mean, because you, like, you, like, you mentioned that's you a mentioned, good question. Yeah. Well, you mentioned how like you talked about like you got called up. It's a milestone game. People finally like, yeah, they really want you to do well because like they're a fan of you. Yep. But you also said that, you know, it's either love or hate. And now the comment, like, how do you not read the comments? Because social media, we all know, is the, <laughs> I mean, it's it's the worst thing ever when oh, they use it correctly. Yeah. yeah. So I uh, see it all the time. I don't even know where to start with this. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. The beginning. I'll just give you like an example. So I posted like a mic'd up Instagram and TikTok are awful with mm -hmm. comments. So I just, I basically turned all my notific no notifications off on everything. So, I only see it if I'm like scrolling through, which I try not to do because it can be a brutal place, a dark, scary place. Yep. But the last, not the last, like second video I posted um, on TikTok, it was like one of my shorter mic'd up things. It was like me chirping the Long Beach Sharks. And like, I kid you not, every comment was like, this kid's a loser. He has a cage on. This kid's a loser. This kid's voice is annoying. And like beside it, it's like 5,000 likes, 4,500 likes. And I'm like, Oh my God, the people really not like me that much. But like, I'm not laughing at you over here. I'm laughing. At you. <laughs> you know. But like, the the thing is, like, you, the hate outside is different. When it's on the ice, it's basically just white noise to me. Right. It's yeah. the same chirp over, yeah. and over and over and over again. It's like, oh, put this video. new video. Yeah. This one's going to look good. Like, I've heard that before. Yeah. Like, get some sick, new content, get it. guys. Until you surprise me with a good one, like, nothing's going to get past me. Right. Yeah. Right. And like, the, like they, they some games like two guys come and hit me at the same time. It's like I'm I've done this before, guys. Like right. it's not my first rodeo. Yep. But like dealing with the hate, it's just kind of just like shut it off. Don't go into it. You post it. They hate you want hate because hate is how you get more views. Unfortunately, yeah. that's yeah. how it goes. So when you're getting hate, you're doing something right. Was there a lot of trial and error when you were first getting into this with like miking yourself up and just like technology flaws, maybe stuff like yeah, that? Yeah. Uh the camera I had before Hatrix was rough. The mic I had before Hatrix was rough. I kind of just slowly upgraded everything as we went. And mm -hmm. Just whatever doesn't work, I kind of like try to find a way to make it better. And that's kind of honestly how I've just grown. Yeah. And that's how you grow with everything. Definitely. Yeah, it's a lot of trial and error. Trial and error in our part too. It definitely. We, we know, as, we know as you saw firsthand, trying to. Get I was trying to. Going. I was trying to get the podcast going. We had wires on top of me, underneath. <laughs> like, <laughs> It's okay, guys. We've all been there. <laughs> well, it's a traveling circus. I mean, usually we just have to zoom on, and we just go back and forth, and we're good. It's real easy. But when we're on site, it's a whole – and we're trying to do 5,000 other tasks. True. And, Brody, can you keep your um, negative comments for the comment section? Thanks. Right. Uh, I'm going to be a keyboard keyboard warrior. Yep. So you almost respect the guys that do watch and yes. do on the if ice. If you turn me on the ice, I respect you 10 times more if you hide behind a keyboard. So I got a question, too. So coming into Danbury, doing this – how did some of your teammates like feel about you doing it? Were some of them turned off to it? And then the I coaching would, staff too. And I would, else? Th cause when I went to Danbury, I kind of gave them a heads up like, Hey, I do YouTube. Like, is that okay? And they're like, totally on board because it's basically marketing for them as well. 100%. So, um, once you get past that, I don't really care mm -hmm. if you like me or not. Like, cause at the end of the day, you're also getting game footage. You're also getting highlights. You're also getting photos sometimes. Mm hmm depending on if I want to or not. Right. But like, it's definitely, it was definitely rough when I first started, but now everyone knows, okay, you're going to Danbury, True Crew's there, like, you know what to expect right. now. But yeah. at the beginning, it was like, what is this guy doing? Right. Like, uh, Who is little, this that's, kid? He thinks he's, the, he thinks he's this good. Like, right, right. <laughs> he has a whole mar marketing team with him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yep. But you get opponents that come in, you got your team there. I mean, I've seen the highlights. They look really good. Oh, yeah. I want to have, if I'm, an opponent, I want to have a sick goal against your team because it's going to look good. Go on YouTube, and you know, 100,000 people are going to see it. And mm -hmm. all of a sudden, my spot's going to blow up, and I'm going to get a lot of love, usually. Right. <laughs> Sometimes hate. Yeah. Yeah.
Yeah. That's how it goes, dude. Like it's like the like especially with NA three, like it's the same six, seven, seven teams in your so you see the same guys over and over again. Mm-hmm. At first I kind of wanted to play tough, but now after a while, after you get hit by the same four guys over and over again by the same team, it's like maybe I should be friends with these guys. All right. Everyone else pretty much they know what's going on. Like they try to make highlight real plays mm-hmm. and they'd rub it in my face. But like, yeah, I, that's just how it goes. <laughs> Put you, that in your video. It, but, Yes, I got that today. So All I got right. that today. Right on. Well, and you you played El Paso, so you know you know the, the brand has grown. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. in Texas now. The craziest thing to me is you play me, you say all that, and then you want to take a picture after. It's like, what's <laughs> going on here, guys? <laughs> Keep it on the ice. Yeah, once, on the the, ice. once the buzzer goes off, everyone's all friends. Yeah, we're all like, friends. Everyone again. loves each other in the NA3. No one hates each other. No one, one hates each other. Right. We all are friends exactly. here. Exactly. <laughs> guys, a nice prayer in after the game. It's great. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. Did you play um, when you're at Elite Hockey? Did you? Do you have any guys that play in the NA3 each other with you? Or against you? Yep, or... we have Tim Mattingly. He's on, oh, God, he's going to kill me. I don't know. Helena. Okay. Got that one. Yep. Uh, we got... You're going to almost test my knowledge. Pekarski not... just played him. He got put in because the goalie let him three goals in the first first period. So, Uh-oh. That's how it goes. But he, he buddies with him still. I believe there's one or two more. But it's at, in, in the Null, too. It's got a lot of elite hockey guys. So Yeah, definitely. All right, we'll get you out on this last one. We'll keep it relatively related to hockey. Uh-oh. What advice would you give any young player that's working their way up and what they got to work on to get be successful at the junior level and get the opportunity at the next level like you got? Just play your game, man. Like, everyone has a certain skill set going into a game. Like, once you get out of the skill set, that's where you see guys struggle. Like, just stay with your craft. For example, for instance, I'm a small, speedy guy, and I try to bang bodies. So, like, I dump it in, and I try to hit guys. Like, sometimes I'm a skill guy, but most of the time I'm just trying to get in the opponent's face, be speedy, get around guys. So everyone has a skill set and just stick with it. Keep grinding, keep working, work on the stuff you're not good at either. Like there's going to be times where you might need that skill set in a game. So just stick with it and uh, you'll make it, man. Same question, but apply it to the YouTube. YouTube. I player. knew those was coming. <laughs> um, stick with it. Just stick with it. People <laughs> are going to want to hate on you and hate and hate and hate. Like, if you have a passion for something, you're going to get hate. It doesn't matter what you do. NHL guys get hate. Like, everyone in the NHL gets hate one point or another. So, like, with YouTube, like, anything you want to do, like, just keep grinding. Keep working your butt off. And, um, yeah, so that's true crew tips. One more thing. You, you guys keep talking. I'll be right back. Well, I was going to say, and turn off notifications. That, yeah. That's the first thing. You turn, do. turn off notifications for sure. <laughs> Instagram and you said TikTok are the worst. The seven, I don't even go on TikTok anymore. I post it, get right off, because TikTok's right. pretty bad. I honestly, I've, I've been on TikTok twice. I'm old, not really that old, but I'm it's a old, trap. It's I'm, a trap. That's a good thing. I'm old enough to where I know that if I got it and I'd be scrolling at one a.m. every night, I'd waste an hour of sleep and I just yeah I can't do it. Yeah. Oh, TikTok I, at night, bad news. Yeah, bad news. I did that last night. It's on a loop. You'll just. Look at your phone. Oh, my God, it's 3 o'clock in the morning, and it just keeps growing. Yes, 100%. All right, one last thing. We have a T-shirt for you. Uh, oh, wow. Made, Let's... made by me. Not a big deal. Merch guy. Merch. Whatever. Whatever. We'll show, it's, I'll show it. It's a size small, right? It's a uh, medium. Yeah, I'm a medium. Perfect. I'm, right, I'm, sorry, I'm a little bit buffed. Here we I'm go. buffed. A little, I'll let you do it for the camera. You can check it out. You can put your mic down if you need to. Oh, hold, on. hold on, hold on. Look at that. It could have been like a short shift. could have been like a <laughs> Yeah. That's perfect. We weren't, we weren't very good, so that, that's where the name comes from. We weren't, we weren't very good hockey yeah, players. On and off. Short shifts. Yeah. And we're short. Get on, get Very on. short shifts. Yeah. But oh. not 30-second shifts because those actually hurt. If you have a teammate and you just get off the ice and they do a 30-second shift, it's the worst thing ever. So good. short shifts. Boom. Thanks for having me on today. Yeah, dude. yeah. appreciate you. All right. We, again, we want to thank Brody True for stopping by. Uh, yeah, obviously that was filmed back in uh, December during the NA3HL showcase. So his a little season, behind, but it's okay. A little, little behind. We keep talking about that, but let's just sweep it under the rug. Anyways, uh, yeah, so congrats to him on his final year of uh, junior hockey here in the NA3HL with Danbury. Um, heck of a heck of a year for him on and off the ice and continuing now to dream big, which has been his motto like he talked about. Um, so, yeah, uh, thumbs up to him. Thanks for thanks for coming on. Hopefully, he's, hopefully he puts that shirt, wears that shirt sometime. Yeah, you know, it was interesting to me – learning the creative process that he has because i mean you know to 
focus on hockey and be like the player that he was solid player for Danbury to have the constant chirps. Cause people obviously know who he is mm-hmm. and people are kind of coming up to him and like, they know he's mic'd up and they say, we'll call it stupid things yeah. uh, to him. But uh, you know, it, it was very, very intriguing to learn the process and kind of see the whole detail of how the true crew creates the content while he's playing the game. Cause like he's playing, like he can't go film himself too. Like yeah. he does all the stuff afterward, but like during the game, like it's just, it's just him playing like yeah. it's hockey. No big deal. Uh, yeah. Anyways. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. Uh, fun to have him on cool kid. Um, short King, short King, short Kings. Yep. We had the trifecta of the short Kings represented. Well, um, anything else you want to throw in Vinny before we uh, wrap up this much needed episode? Playoff hockey starting next week. Don't miss out. Tune on, tune into any any TV for the play in series. And you know, obviously, this last weekend of regular full regular season action. There's still some uh, regular season games for the Midwest and Central next week. You definitely got to tune in, check it out because I would say you know almost every game means something. Whether it's home ice, whether it's a playoff spot, you know, every game has some kind of ramifications in the next. You know, two weeks before we get into the full version of the Roberts Cup playoffs. So it's uh it's gonna be a good one. Don't miss out. Look at the gold mic just shining. I mean, they're going for the gold medal, they're going for the gold the top of the Robertson Cup. You know, you're just feeding into all that. We got our golden anniversary next year, you know, Ooh. more to come on that. Just Where you know, come. yep. Well, yep. Well, that's that's they call that a tease in the business. You said too much. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We will catch you next week here on Short Shifts. I'm Brandon Hofstra. That's Vinny Paraselli. Catch you next time.